So in, in the beginning, I just wanted to start off with a slide just showing some uh, cases, some horses that all of you probably are, are familiar with, certainly Secretariat. And Barbaro and, and some of these other horses, these are high profile horses that unfortunately were affected by laminitis and ultimately were di died or were euthanized. And this just points out the fact that it is a disease that does not discriminate among horses. It affects all horses of all uh, levels. So uh, it is a very important disease uh, in terms of the number of horses that it impacts as well as the financial and emotional toll it has. Economically, millions of dollars are spent every year on veterinary care as well as the loss of use uh, and death that occurs uh, subsequent to this debilitating disease. Okay, uh, just to kind of backtrack to the economic impact, uh, hopefully everyone can see that slide now. Millions of dollars are spent every year in, in veterinary care uh, for horses with laminitis and, and combined with the loss of use of those horses and also the horses that die or are euthanized subsequent to this disease. This disease is particularly frustrating for us as veterinarians and clinicians as well as it is for you as horse owners and farriers because despite it, uh, an immense investment of time and emotion into these cases, many times, unfortunately, we're not successful in the, in the long term and these horses are, are, have to be humanely destroyed. From a, the standpoint of the athletic horse, which probably many of you uh, have horses that are used for athletic purposes, uh, many horses that have sustained disease or injuries uh, are predisposed to the development of laminitis, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about which of, uh, of particular diseases do predispose them or put them at risk. But the other important thing about athletic function is that horses that have laminitis have a relatively poor prognosis for the return to athletic function, uh, especially if they have changes within the hoof, such as rotation or sinkage of the coffin bone, which again we'll talk a little bit more about. How common is laminitis? Well, there have been some surveys done and it's been estimated that approximately 15% of adult horses are afflicted sometime during their lifetime. Approximately 75% of horses uh, in one study anyway at a university hospital uh, that presented there for laminitis actually uh, had signs or, 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 or developed things that led to chronic debilitating disease that often leads to uh, humane destruction. So you see a, a relatively large number of horses in the whole population can be affected and it has a relatively high mortality rate so it is a pretty uh, severe disease. So what will we actually cover today? First, what is that laminitis and is there a difference between laminitis and founder? Second, what is the anatomy of the equine digit and particularly uh, related to its relevance to the development of laminitis? Why do certain diseases that affect other parts of the body that are distant to the foot actually result in local injury within the foot in the digital lamina? What are the laminar events that, are, that occur that are thought to actually lead to laminitis and laminar failure? How can I, or, or in other words, how can you work with your veterinarian to prevent laminitis when your horse has a disease that you know commonly results in laminitis? And once your horse becomes acutely lame, how can you work with your veterinarian and farrier to try to stop the disease process before it gets to a point that's irreversible and you have uh, structural failure of the foot? And finally, what treatment options do you have for the treatment of horses with chronic laminitis? So what is laminitis? What's the definition? Laminitis simply is defined as an inflammation of the lamina and as we'll talk a little bit more about, the lamina are those soft tissue structures that are, uh, are between the hoof wall and the coffin